Good evening, this is Gary Kavner here on the right side. I'm here today with my friend and colleague, Michael Dwyer. Today is Wednesday, the 23rd of the 10th. We have two stories for you, both as utterly irrelevant as the other. One concerns the most recent Brexit moves in the never-ending fiasco, and one concerns the War of the Buttons, a name it's been given by the media, and which it physically pains me to say. <clears throat> Michael, should we give uh, people an update on what's happened in Brexit since the Monday show with the general proviso that there's no point talking about this for a great deal because we now need to see if an extension will be granted and we don't know if that will happen, although presumably it will. Yeah, it's one of those stories where basically we have to talk about the fact that there's nothing to talk about, but that there's nothing to talk about for a kind of a weird, maybe it's even an interesting reason, even though... For example, this is kind of news. Boris got a vote through. It went, it passed, which hasn't happened before, or not that often anyway. But Boris had decided for whatever reasons of his own, he wanted the whole thing done and dusted in three days. And other people said that we spent more time on the Wild Animals Acts in circuses, which apparently had at that time had an effect on 13, no, 17 animals in the United Kingdom. And therefore, this was inappropriate to spend so little time. Yeah, people say that with this very serious and pious face on them. But have they not been talking about this, like, for two years now? It's not as if, like, it's starting off a perfect blank virgin canvas here. Surely, pretty well every argument from everybody has been heard. But anyway, that's what it is. We are now where we are. Uh... Yes, we've pissed away all the time we've had so far, but we promise you this time, if you give us more time, we'll really actually do it. And somebody's saying that the talk is now he's going to ask for like a three-day extension. My memory serves that the Europeans had already said they didn't want to do a three-day or a fecky little thing like that in the past because they said what will happen is it'll be three days and then it'll be six days. It'll be like a student looking for an extension on an essay that he's never going to finish. And it'll just be another enough. So they said either you get a big extension, big proper one up to Christmas or up to January or Easter or something, or else no extension at all. But... I mean, it seems very clear that what the... What the Remainers are trying to do is they're trying to make this so uncomfortable that they have to have a second referendum. And then they'll promise a uh, general election after that, which I think is a nonsensical proposition to start with. These are people saying, well, we're not going to respect the results of a previous referendum, but by God, if you rerun it, we will be totally behind it. And I imagine the unsaid subtext there is, as long as it goes the way we want. Yeah. But they might be able to force it through. The, only thing, the thing is, the only result of a referendum that would be worthwhile, and I, and I will clarify that, is we don't want to leave the EU because that's kind of easy. Okay, you're not leaving the EU. Anything else would just be where we are again. What do we mean by that? What kind of leaving? Are we only half leaving? Do we get to see the children? Do you want to keep the dog? And it's just... This is why it's usually not parliaments that decide trade deals. Yes. It's usually the executive that handles these in most countries because parliaments are not designed for this sort of thing. Can, I mean, can you imagine every time a trade deal is changed, Parliament have to have a full discussion about whether bananas should have a required curvature to them? And it's also, nonsense. There would always but it's what be. the British Parliament brought upon themselves. That's what they want. And there are always going to be elements of trade deals which are unpalatable. But when you present the thing as a block, you can look at it in its totality and say, oh, well, actually, yeah, OK, it's fine. But if you have to debate it, if you have to get it through Parliament, then people will then become obsessed, inevitably, that's the nature of politics, with the bits they don't like. So you forget about the totality and the importance of the totality, you become obsessed with the two or three things about the fact that you're not allowed to export hairy coos to Iceland anymore without paying a 16.5% VAT tariff or something. And that this is where they are now and God love them. It's like when I was a kid, there was a certain kind of low-grade film that you get on Saturday mornings. Cowboys sometimes, sometimes it would be a Tarzan movie. And one of their stock moments in it was when the guy would be walking along and suddenly he goes sinking down and you knew it was quicksand. Now we didn't really know what quicksand was, but we knew it would kill you and you could never know where you were walking. These people are now in the longest, most boring version 
of a guy going down to quicksand and you got this terrible feeling that the quicksand may not actually be deep enough to drown him he may just stay there no waiting, it'll just be unpleasant until he starves to death he won't even drown it and i just don't want at this stage to either go under or somebody pull him out of the quicksand because it stopped being funny but anyway boris will have voted boris has lost a vote by the time we return on Sunday. I am confident we will have many wise and wonderful things to say about Parliament. However, Gary, it's very sad for you. you know this actually Chris. reminds me of Michael. What's that? The abortion debate. Oh God! And you, like the reason the abortion debate is so awful for most people is because there are two fundamentally different ways of looking at it, and there's no real middle ground between those things. You either think it is something or you think it is the other thing, and everyone in between has a sort of, I just want a solution to this problem, please God, let it get as far away from me as possible. <laughs> I kind of get that sense here as well. These pe- There's no agreement these people can come to. They've shown they're incapable of actually governing, and the fact that they refuse to leave Parliament and let there be a general election is a debate basement of the entire system well as i've said to before we were talking you can tell i'm unhappy about this we were we were yeah you you, like you really care we were talking about this before um you know the brexiteers and not just the brexiteers are terribly fond and proud of the rich and ancient heritage of their rich and ancient democratic institutions now the problem is that the, the longer this goes on that's just starting to sound silly because the opinion of people within Britain of Parliament at this stage must be at an all-time low. Now, I think it, in some ways that's unfair because, as you say, this is just the kind of thing that Parliaments are not built to deal with. But the carry-on and the inexorable, interminable carry-on just seems to go on and on and on and on. Do you know what? Thank God that kind of nonsense doesn't go on in Dal Aaron. No, no. Dal Aaron doesn't debate issues of scope. No, no, but for example, when people are in the ch- what I really meant is that when people are in the chamber, they behave properly and with dignity and obey all the rules. Keep up, Gary, here. We're trying to get onto another story. It's a segue. We call ah, yes, it. yes, the, the, the war of the fucking buttons. <laughs> As I will refer to this every time from now on, because apparently that's what we want to call it. And I'm not one to go against a media narrative. Well, you've got a war of the buttons. I've, I, it, I've seen it. It's called, it's called, in fact, button gate. Bollocks to that. It's not hard to be a gate these days, is it? Pretty well anything is a gate. One of my greatest hopes in life is that I live to see another scandal in Watergate. <laughs> in the Watergate Hotel. Yeah. So I can see someone, without any concern, refer to it as Watergate Gate. <laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. But I just... If, if, if for, if you are a sensible person and you have not been following the political news, I will give you a, an idea of what's been happening. It turned out that some Fianna Fáil TDs had been... In, in the doll you vote through an electronic button press. And every seat has one. You're assigned a seat. It has a button. It's tied to you. Yeah, every seat. No, it's- it turned out that some Fianna Fáil TDs... Some Fianna Fáil TDs were voting for people who were not in the chamber. As in, it involved Timmy Dooley. Timmy Dooley had stepped out to take a phone call. Well, Timmy, was he stepped out when the vote happened? Or was he up at the back on the phone? Well, I mean, usually they would be at the back of the phone. That's what happens. But apparently he had stepped entirely out of the room. And there were a number of votes. Now, it's long been the practice in the doll that if you aren't going to be at your seat for whatever reason, like you're taking a phone call at the back of the room, which happens a surprising amount, you will get the person sitting near you to vote the way you wanted. And as long as you're still in the room, it's not a breach of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. If you're outside the room, it's a breach of the Constitution, which should be a serious matter. Should be. However, as someone who is highly invested in politics and cares about politics and the structure of politics... I couldn't give a single solitary fuck about this. I mean, I the only thing about this that I actually find in any way moving is it annoys me. It annoys me immensely that the two largest political stories in domestic politics in the last year have been a woman who can't balance on a swing and people who don't know how to push a button. Well, those are those are our, our top trends. Yeah, I, I think you'd be unkind. I think actually what we've seen is that 
all of them know how to push the button. It's just they don't know the correct circumstances under which the button should be pushed. Now, I will I will say this. It initially involved uh, Timmy Dooley. And was it Niall Collins? Niall Collins and then Lisa Chambers. Yeah, so those two got removed from the Fianna Fáil front bench. Yes. Lisa Chambers, on the other hand, may be the only person here who has actually created a legitimate problem for herself. Because Lisa was asked, had she ever... Because the Dooley and Collins thing broke first. Yeah. And Chambers ended up on national radio (laughs) and was asked, had she ever done this? And she said no. Uh... And subsequently, video of her, because the doll is taped. There is video of every vote. And they worked out that they could rewind the tape. Quite easily. Mm. And so it turned and then they released the fact that Chambers had in fact voted for someone else, which is to say that Chambers either lied Mm misremembered or for some she's saying that she didn't think they thought she meant had she ever done it deliberately and she had done it accidentally you see i think that's more worrying that you have tds wandering around the place pushing buttons in some kind of random compulsive tick button push button push if you if you were to do that if you were if you vote the wrong way in a vote yes let's say you vote no when you mean to vote yes you are absolutely entitled to go up and tell the people overseeing the vote that you voted the wrong way and you want your vote changed yes and they will do that yes. what happened with chambers is chambers voted for someone else went back to her own seat, voted again, and then didn't tell anyone an error had been made. Now, had that happened, I think Chambers will be able to go, look, this was a simple mistake. I I brought it to people's attention. There's obviously nothing happening here. She may have actually created a problem with herself. She has not so far been removed from the front bench. You know, I wonder, you know, Gary, I wonder about these modern politicians. It's like sometimes they haven't actually watched Yes Minister which is the basic Bible and guidebook for the conduct of civil servants and politicians. And Humphrey says explicitly and simply, you must always tell the truth to the press about a subject that they could find out the answer to the, uh, to by themselves. And Lisa, was it this perfectly... Why? She, she made a sacrifice out of herself. She has made... She is, as you are very fond of saying, in this case, hoisted on her own petard. She, ne- she never had to be in this situation, but there you go. Of course, now, Fine Gael or <laughs> Fine Gael and all the other parties shot. No, actually, no, my favourite bit. This, honest to God, you, this was the best bit. Did you happen, I know you were uh, around and about the country today, so you, you probably didn't get the, the opportunity to hear the interview with uh, Mary Lou on the news. I didn't, no. Mary no. Lou. How was it? Uh, this now for those who are concerned that I may not be being fair, Mary Lou, you can go back and find it. I'm sure on the RTE player. Mary Lou was asked about the subject, of this, and she said, "We yes, it's we. Uh, it is what is button gate. It's hashtag button gate. We know it's a big. It's an important story now because it has a hashtag. <laughs> she actually, I know what she means." But that's not, but not what you said. I thought, God, that's brilliant. I did see some of the, the speeches about this in the doll today and about how this strikes at the heart of our democracy. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. all I could think is, like, who gives a shit? But that's, like, that's, you, know the, that's, you know the term inside baseball? Absolutely. Inside, this is it's, it's for, if you haven't totally heard it before, it's a term inside. used to refer to if you're involved in business it's something that's only of interest to people in business and you think it's really important but no one else cares and it's the same in politics this is something that is of interest to a very small subset of people but if you go to the public and i mean i've been seeing the newspaper things and they're saying Fianna Fáil is being increasingly damaged by this <laughs> you sort of go no one cares nobody cares no one cares last night but I, what I, I did like I, sorry, I, I was talking to a, a, for, a politician ex former politician last night and he gave me an insight I thought well I know why you were so successful because he said oh Fianna Fáil are really damaged by this and they would definitely want no no elections anytime soon and they'd be hoping this could really hurt them in the in November in the by-elections and I'm looking at the man and I say nobody nobody in the real world cares about this Nobody knows what the story is, except it's about pushing buttons. And even if 
even if there was some sense that they kind of cared, it is the absolute classic, well, they're all doing it anyway story. No, that's what I did really enjoy about this, because Fine Gael, I mean, I saw Noel Rock come out. He reported Timmy Dooley and Collins to the um, to one of the ethics oversight boards. Can I just ask you a question very quickly? I know Noel a little bit. Nice guy. Uh, good, good, solid guy. Do you think Noel knows that it is actually possible not to always take a position on everything and rush no. towards that camera? You know, they used to say that the most dangerous thing in in Milan was a Prada sale and 15 Japanese teen- teenagers that he got between the two. I think the most dangerous space in Dublin is the space between Noel and a camera or a microphone these days. Go for it. Great guy. Very nice guy. Great re- public representative, I'm sure. God, I, always, always has it out there with the opinion. I mean, occasionally it's a good opinion. Just not consistently enough that what he's doing is a good idea. You know, sometimes, particularly when you're talking about your colleagues... At the end of the day, you have to have soup with these people, you know. And they, also, like they're Brendan Howland and they're all a little bit and in Finnegan doing that. The, the line, oh, shocked, shocked. I just, I say, I am shocked to discover gambling is going on in this establishment. However, have we noticed Leo on the last reports? Anyway, Leo is the only leader who has yet to confirm that he has never done it. So here's here's something I just want. to point out about this i am personally aggrieved by this story for one very simple reason What's that? i am 30 years old maybe 31 i tend to forget at this advanced age mm. where my cognition is failing i have gotten to this age of my life without saying a single good thing about timmy dooley <laughs> and many <laughs> negative things and now this thing comes up and i have to actually go I actually don't think what he did is an issue. I'm sure it breaches a very technical provision of the Constitution and maybe a slight censor and lads, don't do that again, get in the actual chamber. I don't I don't think it warrants any more than that. What I did enjoy is the amount of delight that certain Fine Gael people took in this, which was quickly followed by the news that Fine Fall had gone through 12 years of video recordings and had reported every incidence they could find of a Fine Gael minister voting for someone else and how how did they ever imagine that that wasn't exactly what Fianna Fáil were going to do I and I I was talking to someone they were saying I mean it's been like two days how could they go through 12 years of footage and all I said was well I imagine that if you go into Kildare Street for instance the time of the vote is noted yes and if you can pick the time on the recording all you do is you get a team of interns and you go you do these months you do these you do these here are the times. Get to it. Leave interns on it for a day or two. Come back. You've got a full record. They probably have missed a number, in fact. But the important thing is they got some. Now, the thing here is they've reported the ministers. But I'm interested to see how many TDs they've got. Yeah. And obviously, it's better It's better notice. It's better, better news for the uh, ministers. And also, again, it's being basic sort of keep keep a decent relationship. Don't go after TDs. They didn't go after. They didn't make the big thing out of it, unless you're going after Lowell, God love him. Because, you know, you, you, you want to have a relationship with these people. You want to be able to run the house. You want to get house business done reasonably well. So you just go after the ministers at the beginning. And if any girl keep going after it, you say, OK, that's well. I did. I will actually say the... I did. Fiona Sheehan uh, from The Independent wrote an article on this that was actually quite good. And it was basically making the point that the, he openly says this is a witch hunt. And he also makes this point that people are going through video evidence and you don't you don't have a perfect view of the chamber at all times. And I mean, they're circling people or they're saying that was my hand. Those are my b-. <laughs> Regina Doherty legitimately sent out a press release that said it was something like f- well-known fluffiness of her boots. Mm. And it's. It's just, it's not a serious thing. You're seeing people say, well, that's my hand, so therefore I can't be caught up in this. Those are my clothes. That's my shoe. Who cares? Like, who bloody cares? If this doesn't strike at the heart of our democracy, we're not the British Parliament tearing itself apart. Well, indeed. Uh, it strikes, it strikes at how... It, it, it is a procedural issue. Purely, purely, purely. Politicians may be interested. Journalists, I think, are pretending to be interested in. Well, the thing is, journalists, political journalists, mostly talk to people who are interested in politics. And people who are interested in politics tend to be interested, well, particularly party 
party politics and political staffers tend to be interested in stuff like this. Yeah, I know they are normally, but this is just so... This is just so low grade when it comes to radioactive material. Like this is this is not fissile. This is not going to make any. You money. don't agree with the Kian Carly when he said these revelations are very grave and go to the heart of our credibility. I mean, the one there, the other thing here is there's no allegation that anyone voted for someone and that vote was fraudulent. It's only that they voted as someone else asked them to vote and that person stepped outside the room. Yeah, at the very worst. That's- that's it. Now, if this was a case of there have been fraudulent votes, absolutely a different thing. There have been no allegations of that. This is purely they were if they were inside the room, what we did was fine because you can push the button for someone else. And if they're outside the door, it's not fine. If it was fraudulent or if, say, it was a, a, a whipped bill of great seriousness and the survival or otherwise of the government was going to hinge on whether or not this they got through this piece of legislation or some really serious piece of legislation, which was highly controversial, highly debated. And it was only going through because a TD that wasn't there ended up voting. And then, yeah, big hoo-ha. But that's not this. This is this is reading the second reading of the what colour will the tiles in the toilet in Listoon Barnaby bill. And I do note the point that we are talking about this, but we are not talking about this as a thing. We are talking about the reporting of this and people acting like it's important. And the problem there is when something actually important comes around, you're like, yeah, but you said that about the buttons. Yeah. But as you say, we are talking about it and therefore I think we should take our cue from that and stop talking about it and say, this is enough silliness for one day, and we shall be back with more serious and substantial silliness when we recover our Sunday miscellany at the end of the week. And therefore, I'll wish our listener a good week and see them, well, see them, talk, we'll talk again on Sunday. All the best.